there will still be some in the church who will say, can't get depressed, you're a Christian, you've got the joy of the Lord, that's your strength. What would you say to those people? I'd say they're talking rubbish. Sorry, I'm just going to say it. They are, because that's like saying you're a Christian, so, you know, people don't die young. Well, they do. They do. And it's like saying, well, you're a Christian, you know, you shouldn't have cancer. People get it because we live in a broken world and God does not promise us freedom from that. He doesn't. He promises us a whole host of things. He promises in the face of death, eternal life. He gives us hope and, and so many things. But he does not promise us an easy road if we decide to follow him. And that maybe for some Christians listening, that, that road has been really difficult because, you know, they have suffered with depression or anxiety or panic attacks or whatever it might be. God doesn't promise you that that's not going to happen. But what you know is that his promise that I will be with you to the end of time is true. And even in your darkest moments, the God I believe in still sits alongside you and never leaves your side. And that's, that's a, that's, that gives you, even in your darkest moments, hope, which is everything. You know, if you're going through grief or whatever it might be, to have hope is massive. But yeah, you, there are lots of Christian leaders out there who may not admit it. But I know that they've suffered with their own mental health issues. And it's actually far better for us to be real about this kind of stuff than pretending it doesn't happen and, and trying to argue in some bizarre way that it's, it's you're a Christian, so you should be all right. Because, yeah, God did not ordain us to feel like this and to experience these problems. But this is the problem when sin entered the world. So did all these kind of things as well. With that in mind, then, for somebody who's listening now, they'll be at church on Sunday. Mm you know despairing i i i don't want to um tell people that i'm going through mm. this difficult time what would be your advice to them my advice would be find someone you trust you know someone you you know that you can tell some tough stuff to and please do tell them the worst thing you can do i i did it for quite a while the first time i got depression i really kind of suffered in silence Gemma knew what was going on but really my friends didn't and that means that in your really toughest times, that, that feeling of loneliness and isolation becomes even more pronounced. And you know, when we draw into really isolated places in life, actually they can be quite dangerous places to go. And I just say, just find someone you can reach out to and just, just tell them what's going on. Because I found that the most therapeutic thing for me, as well as you know, counseling has been hugely beneficial. It doesn't work for everyone, but it really works for me. I still see a grief counselor every single week. I mean, 19 months on from losing Gemma. But I still find it enormously helpful, even on the weeks where I go in there thinking, actually, I don't really don't know what to talk about this week. But we always find something. Um, but it is so important to know you're not alone. And it's really important to be able to talk about it. I think we're too scared, both Christians and non-Christians, with the whole word vulnerable. And we don't want to appear vulnerable. We want the world to see the other side of us. But actually, I believe there is huge power in being vulnerable and open and honest about how you're feeling because you will draw strength from that that you never knew you had.